this radioactive dream gig really that big? Yeah, if Maddie's not dreaming. He does that, you know. I don't know why we keep him on. Well, then, this could be the real big break. Yeah. Anything's possible. It's wonderful. For us. We're gonna need a pro voice for this, though. If this thing's for real, we can't use an amateur. Take it that means you don't care for my voice. It's average. As a musical theater nerd, it's hard to resist star-making moments like Judy Jetson, plucked from obscurity and thrown into the unlikely role of lead singer for a struggling all-female rock group, launching into a spirited rendition of Reach for Your Dreams and captivating an initially indifferent audience. It doesn't hurt when the lip sync is provided by Sue Saad, the voice behind one of cinema's great theme songs, Looker. In Albert Pune's sci-fi musical horror, everything's the same as it would be for any earthbound, fledgling music group trying to make it to that big gig. Only this time around, instead of stealing a van, they've got to pilfer a spaceship. And instead of a stowaway groupie or hanger-on, they've got to contend with an escapee monster man hell-bent on murdering anyone in his path. The first act is a neon-soaked, frizzy-haired lark, with larger-than-life performances and a propulsive score. The hottest nightclub in the galaxy, Radioactive Dream, a reference to Pune's second, equally gaudy feature, has lost an act due to, well, <laughs> death. And the hyperactive, opportunistic manager of the Vicious Lips, played by the one-and-done Anthony Kent's with surprising comedic chops... We'll talk later. I'll talk. You'll listen. Whatever you say, big boy. Don't touch my fucking hand is gonna get these rockin' chicks to the gig no matter what big fucking rock comes their way. Depicted as an amalgam of Hart, Pat Benatar, Patti Smythe, and the many big haired bands of the era, the lips get stranded on a desert planet exactly where the movie stalls out. The performance has come off as lackadaisical, and after some vindictive bickering and ostracizing, the film shifts into a fever dream where nothing is as it seems, and very little, if anything, makes sense. This odd shift is compounded by the fact that this feels as though it should be the second act of the movie, yet it's actually the climax, which leads to a nonsensical twist and an ineffective ending. One expects all kinds of strange adventures on this barren rock, but whether due to budget or perhaps this was Pune's intent all along, Vicious Lips struggles to find any cohesion, and ends up becoming one of the last times the journeyman director would receive an adequate budget where he could realize some of his grand ambitions. Thanks for watching, you horror hounds. A lot of great stuff coming up this month, so keep on subscribing and keep on watching. Take care and happy Halloween.